Well, that'd be good. No, are you just so you're just learning. Yes, he's he's just learning. He's just joined, and so we're we came out here because we wanted to to get some herbs. We want to put in a garden. Sure. If you're just getting into gardening, get into herbs because <laughs> it's like an addiction. It, it'll keep you off the streets. It'll keep you out of the bars. <laughs> but no. But the reason is what generally happens with people is once you get into herbs, like let's take, you can cook with them. You can craft with them. There's a plant we have up there called cardoon, which is actually a vegetable. And you would take the leaves, and when you see that cardoon, it's only one year old, and it's already back up this big. But you take the stalks and you uh, saute them in butter and garlic. Ooh. And that's, that's all you do. Oh, it's really? got a nutty cucumber flavor. But if you let that plant come all the way up, and it'll have eight, 10, it takes two or three years for this process, It'll have a flower on the top, but the flower on the top is a bulb. I mean, like a bulb you put in the ground, and it has little blue hair-like things on it. Oh, really? And you can invert it and dry it, but when you put it in the middle of your centerpiece, that's where your eye focuses on. It becomes the center. But, I mean, what I'm telling you is most people that get into herbs give out a land before they give out of interest. <laughs> because once you've, like you may have heard, the Greek oregano versus Italian oregano. Uh, I don't know the And difference. the basils, I know. <laughs> That's what happens. You start learning this and you learn that. And then, you, then somebody says, oh, did you know that's an insect repellent? <laughs> so, I mean, you learn so much. But, and I will tell you, generally speaking, unlike most typical garden plants, herbs are known for why they're beneficial. And it can be for cosmetic purposes, it can be for culinary eating purposes, or to be for medicinal purposes. Because Wake Forest College over here, when it used to be here, now you go to Wake Forest University and you go to medical school and you, you basically are taught pharmaceutical things. Right. Prior to that, you were taught herbs and botany because that, that was their medicines. And so they would use those things back then as their medicines. Well, and, we're really big into organics and we try and you know, watch what we eat and that sort of thing. Right. Well, if you like that on organics, over here is our organic vegetables. But here's, and this, all of our, all of our herbs and vegetables are certified U.S. Department of Agriculture organic. We grow them in biodegradable pots. But the vegetables actually come from organic seeds. Oh. And that's what dictates to us what we could put in there. Oh, it, okay. It's not as easy to find organic seeds. Right, right. Now, I don't know in the scheme of things, you know, <laughs> where it actually falls down, but right. that was one of the things we knew could be different at the Herb Fest. And we right. said, you know, let's stay with that, and we're going to stay our organic theme as much as we can. So now, do you have a, um, a place? Uh... No. We actually uh, buy all of our plants. Our herb grower actually has greenhouses set up for us, just, and it just grows our plants. Oh, I see. But they have bottom heat on them. Oh. And the reason for bottom heat is a plant, plant stress, no matter what you do to them, and especially movement. But what you're always trying to do is establish the root system, because the root system is what brings up the nutrients. It's like we've told people, and sometimes this is forgotten, if you're out in the middle of the desert, you can have a pipe running through there that's doing 100 gallons a minute. But if it's five feet down and through metal, you're going to die of thirst. So the roots actually are an intake mechanism. So if you have the, a large, well-developed intake mechanism, it's going to get its water and it's going to get its food, and the plant will do well. When you pick our herbs up, you look at the bottom of them. Our root systems are just outstanding. Oh. I mean, they've done a great job of growing, and they're growing organically. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but you have a lot of fun. And so what do you recommend that he start out with? These right here? And I'd go right over there, because the easiest thing to do to get into the herb world, get you some Italian basil. It's called sweet, sweet basil, too. What you do is you get you fresh tomato. You may want to get an organic tomato that you grow, but that's going to, that's going to take too long. <laughs> but, but you take tomato, Put some mozzarella cheese, and you can get that at Super Target. You can get it at Lowe's anywhere. Oh, he loves the, cheese. Will. Yeah, yeah. Get your mozzarella and put you some basil leaves on it, and then drizzle extra virgin olive oil. And the reason for extra virgin is you what you're trying to get is the flavor of the herb itself, the basil. But that's the way you're getting the herbs. You know, and a basil plant, tomato, mozzarella cheese, and drizzle. You're in the herbs after that point. Good luck. Huh? Well, th this is a good question. 
there's two growing seasons for us, for basil. And what you do, obviously with an herb, this is the reason organic is important. You're eating the plant, you're not eating the fruit. So when the basil goes to seed, gets ready to go to seed, it has a flower. All you do is deadhead, you just pinch it off. All right, but the kicker is, everything we plant now will maintain its flavor until about mid-July. Now come mid-July, you can still deadhead it, but the flavor changes and it's not worth it because now you're gonna ruin dishes because you don't. So about mid-July, you go and look for a new plant. You can keep that other one alive, but you're wasting your time. So get a new plant, and the way you look for a new plant, in Wake Forest Farmer's Market, we have a lady that grows them. If you go to a garden shop, and it's July, and you want new basil, because it's now not tasting good, right. make sure what the plant you buy does not have a woody stem, because all a woody stem is, is they've been deadheading right. it, cutting it, and you're, you're buying what you're replacing. So you look for new growth, you know, you look like this, you want to see, you know, this, I know this. You got, here it is. See that? You, you, you don't want to see any wood. You want to see new growth. You want to see light colors. You don't want to see a lot of darkness in the leaves. And the reason being, when the plant grows, it's sucking up water. And as it sucks up water, you dilute. You, you get a lighter green rather than a dark green. I have a question. Yeah. We planted a basil plant in our, in our pot on our porch last mm -hmm. year. And it died um, mm -hmm. right in the, around the first freeze. What's the best way to keep it alive or keep one? Okay, of all the herbs, and these are Mediterranean herbs, mm -hmm. of all the herbs that are most sensitive to cold, it's basil. Right, okay. Right. The only thing you can, if it's, and the reason we do the herb fest April 15th, mm -hmm. the weekend after that, is that's supposed to be the last frost date. Okay. Because these guys can't take it. If mm -hmm. frost hits them, they're dead. Now, if we were to have a frost, and that, look at that plant. You got all sorts of stuff. Look at, look at those leaves. That's a good plant. It really is. But what you would do with this, if it's going to take it inside, that's first option. But if you don't want to take it inside, just put something over it. It cannot take, if, okay. if, if it frosts, it's dead. Okay. And that's what gets you at the end of the year. When we, you replant that second set in, mm -hmm. in July, what will kill it will be the first frost. And the minute it hits, it's dead. So it's pretty much impossible to grow basil year-round in this climate because of the right. frost? Okay. Right, right, So maybe it's just something we buy every year and we plant every and year. And that's all you can. And even, I mean, even if you could grow it, that flavor changes. Yeah. You know, you want to get that plant in Fresh the first every... couple of three months and just keep it going. Now, if you like, when you go to Greek columnar basil, when you go to Thai basils, mm -hmm. they're much more intense. Mm -hmm. They're also much smaller. Right. Uh, now, the other thing that tastes like this is the globe basil. But the nice thing about globe basil is its natural uh, habit, the way it grows, is into a ball. I mean, it does that. The leaves are 1 25th this size. They taste almost the same. But now you've got a bunch of leaves. But where a lot of people use the globe basils is on a walkway because of the natural way they grow in the ball they make a nice little path to go down. But they have the same flavor right. as this does. Look. Yeah, I mean, but this, but you're gonna use this because you don't, you know, that's 30 <laughs> their leaves to equal that.